Welcome back to Apocalypse and Genesis. Let me say that I'm a bit concerned, not for me, but for you, my children and grandchildren. I spent 14 years overseas, mostly in Spain and Greece, with trips all over the place. And something the Greeks taught me was their concept of diplomati, what in English became the word diplomat. To the Greeks, it meant two sets of eyes. So when a diplomat reads a treaty, it's to see not only how a good guy might have intended it, but also with a view to how a more deceptive party might attempt to use it to advantage, defeating the original purpose. I believe that is a way the Bible can be viewed, a manual for both sides. Like a grand plan that history must follow unless the people straighten up and fly straight. On the other hand, it serves as a both a guide for the righteous and as opportunities for the devil's children to play their part. So when you reach a juncture in history where castigation is called for, like maybe present day America, the only question of the hour is who will best serve as the instrument of instruction? Like Habakkuk warning that the Chaldeans would chastise Israel or Jesus warning that the Romans would level the place. Call me a paranoid alarmist, but I think this year's summer solstice could be interpreted in, in just such a way. Native Americans saw the hand of God as a warning before the judgment, which is why they put a rattle of a snake on the wrist. Who I worry about World War III and whether it will be the Russians or the Chinese that decide to flip the switch. I worry about it as a sign associated with the arrival of the Ares dragon which is really the trinary Nibiru system flying through our system. I worry about Sirius or Betelgeuse lighting up on a passage of the galactic sheet. Call me superstitious if you like, but I'm absolutely haunted by the words of Job. Why do they that know him not see his day of retribution? So it's not that I believe next week has to be the end, but I do think there is something in store for us to waken us up. To the idea that, you know, we're on notice. Something to show Washington, D.C. that the writing is on the wall. Like a wobble of the earth before the big quake or a tidal wave. Or a clear sign that war is in the offing if we don't back away from our current course. Or the super flare scientists worry about that comes near the quarter precession weakening the sun. This is the oldest representation of the yod that I've found. It's on a stone from 26,000 years ago, the house of the Son of God who brought life. The bait was the sword, Aquarius. Note that Virgo and the Aries dragon changed sides of the Milky Way at the time the galactic center lit up. The eye of God appeared and was associated with both El and Yahweh. At the head of the Yod character, bottom right, you can see what appears to be the head of a dog. Additionally, that's associated with Sirius, the blazing star. It comes at a time the Yoni of Virgo flips to become the triangle of Aries. Hence, representations of the Star of David or Solomon as intersecting triangles. The Egyptian translation of the sign suggests, beware the hand when you recognize the pillars of the God of Truth. The hand is traditionally Orion, where Osiris was slain and Seth took over until Horus returned to avenge his father. In other words, it's about time for a rebirth of the sun coming from out behind a lord of darkness, closing out the procession and beginning a new creation. All of which is also to suggest a nova or great flare is coming, to be followed by a time of darkness. That is, if we assume as I do that we are in the year of the cosmic crossing of the Nibiru system. I'm thinking pretty soon we see an angel of death, Thoth the destroyer followed by Marduk the scorcher, followed by something else to which I haven't a name. The eagle and lion of four S or twelve, a phoenix with a lion's face at San Qingdui, a procession of Thoth priest with his lion king. The big stone is American. They saw God as a mastodon and as a raven who ate the sun. 
The statue of the angel riding an elephant is a Bactrian, if I recall. The little heart of heaven with a heron descending upon a serpent is from Israel. The ob stone is from Mexico. The scorpion with the hand of God as his warning is from the Maya. The concern, of course, is that the warning for the shift comes to Orion and the sun crosses Orion next week. We saw how the pole shift works at Puyang, China, in the Yangshao burial. The Earth does a pirouette standing upon the new vernal equinox every 6,537 years. Last time, Draco switched places with Leo, with the god standing upon Orion. Similarly, a now defaced and decapitated pillar at Tiwanaku showed us the uh, god standing upon Leo half a procession ago. I believe this is what became the ancient Egyptian sign of the Sphinx, or uh, what they called Acre. The lion became their hieroglyph for L. So this time, Scorpio trades places with Orion, standing on the second fish of Pisces and wearing the head of a lion. Another way to look at it is that uh, an eagle, Aquila, is about to attack the golden calf of Taurus, such as you find depicted on God's Mount Horeb near Midian. The critical period, I think, is between our sightings of Thoth and Marduk, which I foresee happening fairly soon certainly within a gestation of nine months, during which time the pole shift or excursion should begin, as well as a powerful solar flare. Here are three Mesoamerican, um, Mesoamerican views of our problem. It starts at Orion, hence the three eyes, possibly the first time we see the stars of creation together. Sacrifice happens in the time or place of Leo, the middle piece shows Aquarius is going to smash the serpent, as in Genesis 3.15, who it appears is going to rise to Virgo. The Pachamama is more problematic. First, it shows the dove or heron of the Holy Spirit descending, as testified both Christian and Mandean accounts of the baptism of the Christ. Second, it makes the Aquarian-Virgo axis out to be female, suggesting that the Orion Aquila Cross is where to find the male creator. Third, it shows a serpent in a conjunction with her genitalia by birth or otherwise. The great mother of Chatal Hoyuk shows a great serpent emerging from between her legs at Leo. And there is a Sumerian account suggesting the reason um, Leo ends up in the underworld, um, Abel's jail, I think they called it, is that he sodomized a goddess which is how he impregnates her with his mouth, which brings to mind Jesus' most irritating phrase in John 8, 44, telling the hypocrites, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So what you may have there is a secret doctrine of the creation, inflating Cain and Seth, as an Egyptian might. See the secret book of John. And it looks like the heron and phoenix will illuminate both ends of that scene between now and November. The scratching at the bottom of the Pachamama piece shows the pregnancy at the front is not exactly the usual nine-month process. She might deliver on time next spring, but the new heaven and earth might appear at Aquila as opposed to Pegasus, where we normally might expect it. My suspicion is that the heron has been dragging our poles around. Of course, science has yet to confirm anything beyond the possible existence of the phantom exoplanets, never admitting even the possibility that something important is going on. By the time we see Persephone with the twin moons in her hair next spring, we should have a glimpse of our new heaven and our new earth as opposed to waiting three more years to getting the world right side up again. Eventually, the hope is that we can get to Psalm 36, 9, for with thee is the fountain of life, in thy light shall we see light. In other words, we get back to Aquarius. But the transition will be tough because so much of the world's infrastructure will have been damaged and so many of the lands will have been waterlogged and salted. 
I really don't think anything we've done in the way of seed vaults and reserve food stocks will be adequate unless we've already written off huge tracts of human population. I can't imagine the sort of triage exercises FEMA must be going through. Would you do it by reproductive age, genetic health, income, diversity quotas? A total nightmare. Meanwhile, next week, the sun is supposed to begin brightening in the presence of the stars of creation. It would explain recent instances of the windows of heaven opening up in the sky, the clouds being arranged in square waves due to the presence of multiple weather systems. I expect the oceans will soon follow suit with many more rogue waves. Panic won't take long after the exoplanets become visible, since people have been expecting the arrival of the Kachina stars since 2010 and sort of remember what they mean to the Hopi. And if that's not enough, check out Maverick Star Reloaded. The poles have hit the 40 degree mark, and now all bets are off in terms of when the Earth's magnetic field shuts down and the rapid flip begins. When the Sethian rebels from the Osirian Egypt built Jerusalem, they knew that the hand of Orion had been in the north. Whenever they built the moat around the city, they remembered the fact, engraving the hand on the wall near Herod's gate. It illustrates the day Virgo arrived Orion, as Orion had traversed 90 degrees from Virgo and met the, um, the first of Aries on the vernal equinox in 4515 BC. If you remember the New Testament, it is said that one day a Messiah would show up at the Mount of Olives in the east before making his grand entrance. Well, Orion has again traversed 90 degrees of vernal equinox and will arrive the summer solstice in a few days. So I don't know if we're days or months from judgment, but I'm not a bit optimistic about the current state of the world. What I attempted to do with the map of Jerusalem is to show the hand of Orion you know, illustrates the faces of God. We use the triangles of the chalice and the blade to show the male and female aspects of God. And I use the left hand versus right hand that appears in many of the stories of the Bible. I juxtapose the American and Chinese sign for wisdom to show the hourglass of time and the idea that it might be time for a sudden shift in the ecliptic and our house of the zodiac as the poles reconcile themselves in the presence of our creators. The proto sidaitic and Mayan writings show the Aries dragon lined up with the phoenix and serpent, or Virgo and first of Aries at Aquarius, which to both the Maya and Egyptians involved the, what they called the knot of Tiet, where we found uh, Jupiter and Saturn at Aquarius last year at the pillars of the universe. For this year, we will find the Ankh, it seems the Israelites understood the astronomy of the situation and the Maya knew what to do about it. Be sure to follow up with Maverick Star Reloaded to watch when the pole shift peaks into high gear. Pole shift, geomagnetic storms, quakes, storms, and floods are in season for the foreseeable future. Do some last minute shopping to stock up. Wrap the generator and emergency radio, as well as some flashlights in uh, foil and plastic. And do something about your liquidity before the run on the banks. Personally, I plan to spend some time with family. And if we get by the next big day, there are only a few more that people cared about. Try not to get distracted by the political games and the zany posturing of the confused. We have much bigger problems afoot. Emma, bless you and keep you. You know, I'm sure I'm Take care.